حجته الكبرى الذي بيونه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الارض والسماء ولولا قول صافه الارض باهلها واللحظه الدائمه على اعدائهم اجمعين من حين عداوتهم الى قيام يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا ايها الرسول بلغ ما انزل اليك من ربك وان لم تفعل فما بلغت رسالته والله يعصمك من الناس وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم الله صل على محمد وعلى محمد فمن كنت مولاه فهذا علي مولاه اللهم وال من والاه وعاد من عاداه وانصر من نصره واخذل من خذله وادر الحق معه حيث دعا وقال الامام الصادق عليه الصلاه والسلام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ان لله لكل صلاه يصليها هذا الخلق لعنه لجهودهم حقنا وتكذيبهم ايانا صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما في مضمون الروايه Congratulations to all of you respectable brothers and sisters Congratulations to all the lovers of adl and justice to all those who are resisting in front of the zulm and to all those who believe in the risalat and the tawhid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because today is the day when we are celebrating the Eid al-Wilaya the day of the governance of Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam which actually stands for the governance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wilayat and supremacy of Allah over his creatures so today is the celebration of la ilaha illallah and muhammad rasulullah allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad and those who do not believe in the wilayat of amir al-mu'min alayhi salam must understand that their belief of risalat and their belief of tawhid is unacceptable in the eyes of Allah unless they make sure that they also believe in the wilayat which is the only guarantee for the acceptance of tawhid and risala this is the day where the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam delivered his longest sermon of his life which was not delivered in the comfort of his home but in the burning sands and 120000 companions who were returning back from the farewell hajj are the audience of the prophet those who went forward prophet asked for them to be returned back and those who are lacking behind they were waited for so that they can join and the unique member was formed which was never found in the history of islam on any other occasion other than this the member made from the aqtabil ibil and the saddles of the camels 
and that's where the Prophet went up that member and delivers the longest sermon. Mentioning a long list of things and obviously the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning and the service that he has performed and conveyed the risala and the divine message and after all those things that he had mentioned in the beginning then he comes to uh, the point uh, where he is saying to the crowd that uh, mentioning about his departure from this world which is going to be very soon and that's where he mentions the Hadith al Sakhalain. Hadith al Sakhalain is basically part of the khutbah of Hadith. This is one of those uh, ahadith which are mutawatir, that means narrated in so many ways by so many people in so much, in such a way that it causes yaqeen in the heart of the reader. That's the definition of hadith and mutawatir, a hadith which is narrated in such a way by as many people which causes yaqeen in the heart of the reader about the contents, the, the authenticity of them. So, inni mukhallifun, inni tarikun, fiqh wa sakharayn, kitab Allahi wa aitrati ahla bayti, ma'in tamasakum bihima, lan tadillu. I'm leaving behind among you two valuable things. Is it right? Sakhalain or Sikhlain can be read both ways. And as long as you mm, grab these two, you will not be misguided. <laughs> See how you are uh, behaving after me towards the Sakhalain. So Prophet is uh, basically warning and uh, uh, warning the Ashab about their behavior towards the Sakhalain. And also after that he says that فَلَا Don't move ahead of them. Taqaddum means moving forward, isn't it right? So don't try to move ahead of Quran and Ahlul Bayt. What does it mean moving ahead of Quran and Ahlul Bayt? Well, one of the implications of this statement and the stock of this statement is that if we impose our opinion and our right over the pre-existing opinion and hukum of Allah in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam, this is called taqaddum. This is called you are moving ahead of Quran. You are trying to make Quran follow you instead of you obeying the Quran because Quran already has the divine decisions in it. Isn't it right? And the teachings of the Holy Prophet is, are already clear and it has the divine decisions in it. So if we ignore those decisions and we try to dictate our policy to the Holy Quran, then the hadith, another hadith from the Prophet informs us that uh, whoever puts the Quran behind him, that means you move forward, you dictate the policy to the Holy Quran instead of you obeying the Quran. So you are putting Quran behind your back in the terminology of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet says, this, this, uh, if somebody makes Quran, that puts Quran behind his back, that when he dictates the policy to the Holy Quran, Quran hit, is going to hit him on his, uh, you know, on the back of his neck, and uh, he's going to throw him into the hell. He's going to throw him in the hell. So this book is a living creature of Allah. It's unlike any other book. Whatever we behave towards Quran is going to be, um, you know, um, is documented and it's going to uh, basically 
appear on the Day of Judgment and we will be treated likewise. So basically, Prophet is saying, Don't uh, be ahead of the Quran and Ahlul Bayt or you will be destroyed, devastated. Don't stay behind them or you will be devastated. So if we go ahead of the Quran or the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, we would be devastated. If we stay back behind, that means Quran and Ahlul Bayt are leading the way already on behalf of Allah. But we are not listening to them, we are not following them, we are not obeying them. We are sitting back and relaxing, idle, not obeying the divine duty. This is called keeping the Qur'an in the front and you stay back without obeying. So Prophet says, Don't do that behavior. You will be devastated. Don't teach them nothing because they know more than you. So don't try to teach the Ahlul Bayt nothing. There are some people who are trying to teach Ahlul Bayt. You would say, how? Well, this is exactly what it translates into. When you are presenting your opinion and your own take on Islam in the presence of the pre-existing Ahkam of Ahlul Bayt this is exactly what it means that you are trying to pose yourself to be superior and more knowledgeable than him. Is it right? It's true that the Mushtahim has given that fatwa, but you know what? We are living in the West. We know the situation better. Isn't it right? And I said to some of the people, okay, so you think the Mushtahideen, Hafizullah Azma'een, may Allah protect all of them, do you think they, uh, obviously, do you think that Rasulullah knows your situation in the West better or not? If you think Rasulullah also doesn't know, na'udhu billah bin dalik, then you are denying the holy Quran. Because Quran calls him Khatam al the seal of the messenger, seal of all the prophets. Isn't it right? So he is not supposed to be the seal of the prophets if there are further needs arising in the West this Prophet did not address. Then why did Allah made him the seal of the prophets when there are further needs still available in the West which were never addressed by Rasulullah? So that means that the belief of Khatam al it has to go down the drain because now Allah is obliged to send a different messenger from the West. Isn't that right? This is exactly the, what's the meaning of the behavior of some people who try to say that our Mushtahideen do not know how we are going through in the West. And I said to some people, well, does Rasulullah know about that or not? Mushtahideen are telling you what Rasulullah has said. If you believe that Rasulullah knows and has the ilm of head, this Quran says, Quran is very clear that Allah is teaching the ilm of head to the Prophet. So this is about worshipping Bunya actually. And for some people maybe ignorance. So Prophet has warned us not to allimuhum, don't teach them nothing. In the whole because certainly they are more knowledgeable than you. So don't try to teach nothing to Ahlul Bayt. And then he comes to, after mentioning all that, then he comes to the final uh, point of the khutbah is that he poses the question to the masses that Ayyul Nas, Man, he says that Man Aulan Nasa, not Ayyul Nas, Man Aulan Nasa bil Mu'minina bil Man Fusihim. Which one among, uh, you know, who has more authority and walayat uh, from the people over the mu'mineen than the mu'mineen have over their own selves? And people replied that uh, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam, Allah and His Messenger knows best. And that's where Prophet says, in Allah wa So this is how Prophet starts. Allah is my Mawla. That's what we believe, that actually the walayat of Amir Rumi is actually nothing but the rule of the supremacy of Karimatullah over the creatures. It's the word of God that is ruling through Imam Islam. 
Imam Ali is the Khalifa of Allah. So Prophet and Imam Ali stands for the Walayat of Allah in the real sense. That's where the, the whole silsila and the chain starts from the Walayat of Allah. In Islam, actually no one is the Wali other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the Wali Quran, Quran is very clear in saying, Allah huwa al-Wali. And this is the Hasr. You know, Taqdeem wa Mahaqqub al-Takhir yufid al-Hasr. So actually in the tafsir we learn that no one is the wali other than Allah. Now if Allah gives the wali to somebody, he would be the wali. If Allah does not give, he would never be the wali. So wali has to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet says, in Allah Mawlaya. Now there are discussions and discussions and discussions going on in various, among various sects of Islam. What is the meaning of Mawla that Prophet has been mentioning in the khutbah, and some say it's about the friendship of Imam Ali Now, do you consider Allah to be your friend as well? If you consider Allah to be your friend as well, then it would be okay for you to accept the meaning of friendship for Imam Ali. Because Prophet says, starts his discussion from here. In the Allah Mawlaya, that's where he starts. Suddenly, Allah is my ruler. Mawla and Wali and means Hakim. The ruler, the governor, the one who has authority over me. What kind of authority are we talking about? Prophet has said in another hadith that, which I'm paraphrasing in my words, that uh, uh, no one among you can be a mu'min, hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min nafsihi wa malihi wa wuldihi wa nasir ma'i. None of you can be a mu'min until I am more beloved in his eyes than his own life, his own wealth, his own, own children, what nasi ajma'in and all the people. Is that the kind of belief we have towards Rasulullah that in our eyes Rasulullah is more mahbub and beloved as compared to my own life, as compared to my wealth, as compared to my children, as compared to the rest of the humans. If the answer to the question is yes, then we are mu'min in the dictionary of Rasulullah. And if we consider our life or our wealth or our children or the humans to be more beloved in our eyes than the Holy Prophet, then we are not called a mu'min. And somebody said, one of the ashab said to the Holy Prophet, well, I'm ready to sacrifice my money and children for you and consider them to be less beloved but when it comes to my life it's very hard to sacrifice and prophet replied back that even your life in other words that means even your life has to be that's also part of the basically phenomena that you have to be ready to sacrifice the life according to this narration so Coming back to the point that in the Allah Mawlaya, Prophet says, وَأَنَا مَوْلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَنَا أَوْلَى بِهِمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah is my ruler, certainly, and I am the ruler and mawla of the believers. وَأَنَا أَوْلَى بِهِمْ And I have more authority over them, مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ from themselves. So Prophet has more control over me than I have over my own self, if I am a believer. And that's where he mentions this famous statement, which you all know already, and that I mentioned in the beginning, فَمَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَاهُ فَهَادَ عَلِيُّ مَوْلَاهُ So whomsoever I am his ruler and master, this Ali is also his ruler. So it is obviously it means that the same meaning that applies for the rule of Allah, in the same meaning how Allah is the ruler, in the same meaning how the Prophet is the ruler, is the same meaning which applies towards Imam Ali. Obviously the only difference is that the walayat of Allah is walayat al zatiyah Isn't it right? Allah is, is in, in, in his own self, he is the ruler. And the walayat of the Prophet is given from Allah to him. And the walayat of Imam Ali is given from Allah to him. Whereas the walayat of Allah is not given from anyone to him. So his Allah's walayat is zatiyah 
Whereas the Malayat of Rasul and Qadir Mubarak has been given by Allah. That's the difference. <coughs> Otherwise, the absoluteness of the Malayat is there. We believe the Malayat, you know, Tashri'iyyatun Mutlaqa for the Messenger and the Malayat Takwiniyyatun Mutlaqa for the Messenger. Likewise, we believe the Walayat al Tashri'iyyat al Mutlaqa for Amir al Mubin alayhi salam and the Walayat al Takwiniyyat al Mutlaqa for Amir al Mubin alayhi salam. And if the Walayat al Takwiniyyat, that means the power to do miracles in the creatures of Allah, they can do whatever they want to do in everything that exists, everything reports back to them, every existence in the universe is under their command, and they are the commander in chief of the whole universe. So we say, Mawla al-Kainate was sabitat. I mean, we understand is not only uh, the ruler of humankind, but he is the ruler of all that exists other than Allah. So he rules over everything other than Allah. Masim Allah. So that kind of rule. So that's what we say to those of the you know, uh, Muslims who uh, you know, who are not ready to accept the warayat of Amir Mumin alayhi salam, we say to them as well that can you bring a person who has the warayat of mutlaqatul takminiyya, the absolute power over every existence of the universe, every existence responds back to them, reports back to them, is under his command, can, if you can bring a person who has the walayat al mutlaqat al taqwiniyya, we would love to accept that person to be a worthy imam. Isn't it right? Because we go by the principles. But if you, if you cannot provide a person, a leader who has the walayat al mutlaqat al taqwiniyya, the person that you are accepting or the people that you are accepting do not enjoy the walayat al mutlaqat al taqwiniyya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are not even considered to be comparable to the highness of Imam Ali Rizalam, and they are basically out of the question. They are not even there to be compared with Imam Ali Rizalam and his heights. So, Imam Rizal Ali Rizalam and his khutbah that he delivered in Marf uh, when he was forcibly taken by Mahmoud Rashid to his capital of the government Marf, which is in Turkmenistan right now. That's where in the Masjid al Jami in the in the Masjid al Jami of Marf, Imam Rida al-Islam delivered his statement, which where he has mentioned, "Fahal uh, 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 yaktiruna ala misli hada fayaktaruhu." Can the people are the people able? to bring a person like that so that they can choose him. Aw yakuna muhtarahum behad his sifa fa yukaddimunahu or their choice has this attribute so they can bring him forward. Neither the, that means neither the people can bring a person who has these attributes nor the person they bring forward fulfills these attributes. So their choice doesn't have it and they are unable to bring a person who fulfills these attributes either. Isn't it right? So how would they be able to claim the Imam for anyone else? So now, um, after doing the, this mention of the Walayat of Imam Ali Rasulam, unfortunately we find there are people, some self-declared so-called intellectual people in the society, isn't it right? There are several who are self-proclaimed intellectuals cropping up who never studied in any Hausa system, from any Mufassar of Quran, or any Muhaddis, or any Mujtahid, or any Faqih, or uh, Faqih of Islam, and they claim to be the scholars, and these people, some of these people have started to claim that Prophet did not announce the Walayat of Imam Ali Islam explicitly. Instead, he announced it implicitly. Isn't it right? So, what else is called explicit? He has been announcing the walayat throughout his life from the Da'wat of Sul Ashira till the end. So, now uh, we find that uh, uh, 
Um, after the announcement of the Walayat, Prophet didn't end it there. Khaimah, the tent was installed and the Bayat and all the Egypt was taken. 120,000 people returning back from the hut. They did the Bayat with Imam Ali uh, in the presence of Rasulullah and he is the Shahid and witness. This is also some people say, well, when there is a Khalifa who is accepted already and his Bayat is, is Saqib, then why would we accept it? Now we would like to say to these kind of Muslims that whose Bayat was Saqib? Whose Bayat was ahead? Bayat of Khadir took place ahead of the Bayat of Saqifa. Isn't that right? And not just that, but the Bayat that our, the oath of allegiance and Misaq that our souls have, have given towards the Walayat concept in the Alam al Arwah, in the world of souls, was way ahead before any human being was created into this world, which we call Alam al Misaq. Isn't that right? So now uh, Imam Ali al-Islam's bayat has been taken, which doesn't leave any room for a person to deny. But there are people who still deny it. So because of their denial, the Muslims got divided into 73 sects, not Islam. Islam can never be divided. And this is a lesson for all of us, brothers and sisters. The reason why Muslims got divided into 73 sects because they turned their backs towards Walayat. So even if the Shia community turns their, their back towards the Walayat, the same is going to happen to them. Isn't that right? When the rest, when those of the Muslim sects who denounced and rejected the Walayat of Imam Ali Islam, got divided into 73 sects, 72 other sects of Islam, isn't it right? The same is going to happen. So why the 73 sects? Because not everybody is following the Walayat. Isn't it right? There are some who don't follow the Walayat and there are some who follow the Walayat of Imam Ali. So there will be 73 sects when some don't follow. So what is the Walayat? Walayat is actually the straight path and Salatul Mustaqeem which we all are mentioning day in and day out in our prayers, minimum 10 times daily in our 5 times prayers, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ihdin as Salatul Mustaqeem. As Salatul Mustaqeem, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali al so we are constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the hidayatul taqwiniyah towards the walayat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Hidayatul tashri'iyah is already there. And then right, Allah has already sent the Prophet and he already taught us. Everybody knows about what Prophet has taught. So hidayatul tashri'iyah is already there, but we are not seeking that which is already there. We are seeking actually the hidayatul taqwiniyah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, not obeying and following the walayat means you will be derailed from the straight path. So, anyone who doesn't follow the walayat is not on the Salatul Mustaqeem. That's how the rest of the 73 sects, rest of the 72 sects happen. And what is the status of those who are not on the, uh, on the, on the who are ready to deny the walayat of Imam Ali Salam and reject it? Well, the status is already clear because when this guy comes forward after the announcement of the Holy Prophet and he said that, is this announcement from you or from Allah? You asked us to, to accept Tawheed and to, you know, to believe in you about your Risalat and your prayers and, and prayers and fasting and you all accepted it. And now that you are giving this word, you are appointing your, appointing your own cousin to be the ruler of the Islamic Ummah? Is it from your own self or is it from Allah who is appointing Ali? And he prayed to Allah, this guy prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to anzil alayna hijaratan min as that means if that is from you, not from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then set down a stone, a 
upon us. And the stone came. And the stone came, the punishment of Allah arrived then and there, and the stone entered from his head and came out from the bottom, and the person died then and there. So the status of those who deny and challenge was made clear in front of all the people. So we need to understand that um, when after making the announcement, Prophet didn't finish there, he says, Allah now it's time for prayers. After making announcement, Prophet is wise. Is it right? Now he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my Lord, love the one who loves him. Allahumma wale man walahu. And take the person as your enemy. Take the person who takes Imam Ali as his enemy to be your enemy. So anyone who takes Imam Ali to be his enemy, Allah is going to take him as Allah's enemy. Oh. And help the person who helps him. That means anybody who helps the Wadayat of Imam Ali Islam is confirmed victorious. He's Mansoor. He's, he's, he's the victor. He's, he's confirmed victorious because the dua of the Holy Prophet is already mustajab. Accepted. And then Prophet said, and deceive the person who deceived him. And then he says, and rotate the haq along with him, that means along with Imam Ali Islam, wherever he goes. So wherever Imam Ali Islam goes, that defines the haq. Prophet didn't say that we rotate Ali where the haq goes. So tomorrow any Tabut ruler can say, well, I am on Haq, so now Ali is supposed to follow me. Prophet did not say, rotate Ali where Haq goes. Prophet says, Wa rotate the Haq where Ali goes. So we understand what is Haq by looking at Imam Ali as and his policies of life. So there is no room for anybody to mess around with the concepts and values of Rasulullah. This is the wisdom of Rasulullah. So now we find Prophet had said to Ahmad ibn Yasir, Lo salaka nasu wadiyan, wa salaka aliyu wadiyan, fasluk wadiyan, salaka hu aliyu wa khalil nasa toba. If uh, people go towards one valley and uh, Ali goes towards an, a valley, you go towards the valley where Ali goes and leave the humanity aside. So we don't care in Islam about how many people are following who. Numbers don't count in Islam. Quran and Allah said, لا تطع أكثر من في الأرض يو دلوك عن سبيل الله Don't obey majority on the face of earth. They will mislead, mislead you from the path of Allah. It's Quran. لا تطع أكثر من في الأرض so the majority is clearly denounced by Allah in the nas of Quran. So we don't care in the Islamic value system about how many follow whom. We care about how many follow haq in Islam. So now, uh, um, this has been uh, uh, made clear by Rasulullah. Now the, the celebration of Khadir is the celebration for those, like I said in the beginning of my speech, for those who uh, care about adl and justice. This is their day they should celebrate. They are the ones who deserve to celebrate the Eid al walaya which is the Akbar al-A'yad in the Hadith of Rasulullah, because he said, Akbar al-A'yad al-Ummati, Ghadir al-Yom al-Ghadir al-Khum, Akbar al-A'yad al-Ummati. The day of Ghadir al-Khum is the biggest of all the Eids of my nation. So this is the Eid, the biggest Eid in Islam, according to the Hadith of Rasulullah. So who is supposed to celebrate this Eid? Those who are, those who care about other, those who have their conscience alive. These are the people who are supposed to celebrate. Because Imam Ali Islam is all about other and justice. And uh, uh, this uh, Adl and justice uh, has, if you care about the variety, 
then it has a prerequisite. And the prerequisite of the belief of Walayat is Tabarri. In the right, in Arabic we say Tabarri, in Farsi or Urdu we say Tabarra. So Tabarri is the prerequisite. My teacher, Ayatollah Jawadi, let me read the sentence uh, uh, of my teacher first. Hawantarke tahliye muqaddam bar tahliye as tabarri qabla tawadis. Just like in Ilm al Akhlaq, we learn the three stages of Tazkiyatul Nafs tahliya and tahliya and tajliya. Isn't it right? The first step, step is tahliya, means getting rid, to get rid of all the evil attributes of the soul. First, you make your soul cleaned up from all the evil attributes that drag us towards the harams in our lives. And then, after removing the haram, the roots of the haram attributes, which is the tahliya stage, then we adorn ourselves with the adornments of the beautiful attributes of Islamic morality. That's a step number two. So my teacher says, just like the tahliya stage is ahead of tahliya, similarly, the stage of tabarri is ahead of the stage of tawalli. Before you announce, well, I believe in the wadayat of Imam Ali Islam, and I accept. Before you announce that, you have to fulfill the prerequisite, which is tabarri. That means you have to disassociate yourself from the enemies of Imam Ali al Islam. And you have to denounce and condemn the enemies of Ahlul Bayt and the Walayat of Ahlul Bayt. So here comes the responsibility. The responsibility number one, if we believe in the Walayat of Imam Ali al Islam, and the sign and alamat for every haqiqat. Every haqiqat has a sign with which we discover that that reality exists. If you want to discover that a person believes in the walayat and he is muwali over the walayat of Amir Rumi Islam, the sign is this. Did he disassociate from the enemies of Imam Ali al Islam? Now let us look at this hadith. This person comes to Amir Rumi alayhi salam and says in the, the riwayat says in the Rajul al Qadima Amir Rumi alayhi salam faqar ya Amir Rumi inni uhibbuka wa uhibbu fulanan wa samma ba'da a'da'ihi The person came to Amir alayhi salam and says I love you and I also love him He mentioned the name of one of the enemies of Imam alayhi salam now look at the response of Imam Ali towards this kind of, of, a, of Muslim. Well, there are so many out there in the society, isn't it right? Who are, who are not only having soft corners towards the Tawuts, not only they are sympathizing with the Yazids of today, not only they are justifying the wrongs of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt Salam, but they are actually supporting and assisting. Is that right? Some people even go forward to support and assist. Now look at what Imam Ali Salam did uh, reply to this person. He said, As for now, you are a blind person from one eye. So we understand, obviously, that belief in Imamat gives us the vision and the basirat of to our soul. Just like your eyesight is there, you know, your physical vision. Similarly, in Islam, we believe the souls have vision too. And if you believe in the walayat of al bayt that's where your souls have the vision intact. And if you don't believe in the walayat, then you are blind at heart. And these people deserve to be resurrected in the Day of Judgment as A'ma. Man kan fi hadhi A'ma, fa huwa fi al-akhirati A'ma. Whoever is blind in this world will be blind in that world. So it's lots of people are blind at heart. So Imam Ali Islam said to him, Amma al-an fa anta A'ma. As for now, you are blind from one eye. Fa imma an ta'ma, wa imma an tuqsir. 
So basically what's going to happen is that before you die in the future of your life, either, in other words, either you will become blind for both the eyes, that means you switch sides and leave this path and go to that side, or you become, uh, you know, you, have, you end up having the basirat for, from both the eyes that means you join this side. So you have to switch the sides, either you will totally go towards that side or you will totally come towards this side. You cannot remain in the middle. Anybody who is walking the path in the middle then is bound to be either going towards that or this side before his death. So this has to be very clear in our minds. And then uh, another person, this, this is from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, Qila al-Sadiq alayhi salam. It is said to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, Inna fulana yuwalikum. There is such and such person who loves you. That means loves you and the faith alayhi salam. Illa annahu yarqafu ani baraate min adunukum. But he is weak in doing baraa towards your enemy. So Imam Salaam says, Hayata Kaziba Mani Dam Habbatana Walam Yatabara min Aduina. So basically we learn that uh, a person who uh, you know uh, claims our uh, Mahabbat but did not disassociate and didn't do para from our enemy is lying. So this is the uh, uh, this is the policy of Banuya to separate the religion from politics and uh, keep the people away from the walayat and make them busy in following the Islam minus walayat. That's the policy of Banu Umayyah. Isn't it right? So in the hadith of Imam Sadiq al Islam, he says, In the Bani Umayyata, Atlaku al Nasa ta'lim al Iman, Walam Yutlaku ta'lim al Shirk. Bani Umayyah certainly uh, let the people. They allowed the people to learn uh, about the faith, but did not allow the people to learn about the shirk. Why is that so? Imam says, So that when they will ask them to do the shirk, they would not recognize it. They would be easily ready to do the shirk. What is the shirk that the people did? Examples. Bagawat and rebellion against the Imam al Masoom. Didn't Banu Umayyah rebel against Amir Mumin Staging a rebellion against the Masoom Imam in the eyes of Islam is shirk. But they did their campaign among the Muslim community and fooled them and deceived them to do stage this kind of rebellion against Imam al Islam, which is shirk. Rebellion against the walayat of the Khalifa of Allah means rebellion against God. Isn't it right? So this is what we understand in the light of the Hadith of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inna Bani Umayya atlaqul nas ta'lim al-Iman wa lam yutlaqul ta'lim al-Shirk. It's the job of Bani Umayya who did that. So they basically, in other words, in today's terminology, they ask the people to follow the Islam minus walayat. Keep on praying and fasting and do hajj and hijab and poems and all that. When it comes to the walayat of Amir Mumin alayhi salam, walayat of Amir Baitul alayhi salam, no. Follow our walayat. Isn't it right? Islam of the people of Kufa. If we send lagnat upon them. The Kufi Islam is malum in the ziyarat of Afura and the ziyarat of Waris. We send our lagnat to the Islam of Kufa. The Islam of Kufa is the Islam minus Malayat. Because they are praying. You cannot find in the history people of Kufa stop prayers. They become Talat Salat. We don't have any trace in the history that people of Kufa were Talat Salat. We have no trace in the history that people of Kufa were Talat Salat, Talat Khums, Talat Fitra, or they stopped wearing hijab, they stopped going for Hajj. No, they were doing all these in then why in the world are we sending lanat upon them? They are still praying and fasting and doing the hijab and fitra and khums and takah and all that. Because they are following Islam minus walayat and bet. 
Wali of the time and Mawla of the time, Imam Hussain is slaughtered next door and they keep on praying and fasting. Yeah, zakat. Right? And this kind of Islam minus politics is malum in the ziyarat of Ashura. And brothers and sisters, what the enemies of Islam and Ahlul Bayt are afraid of is also the Al Islamul Walai, the Islam of the Walayat of Ahlul Bayt. The political Islam in today's terminology. If you are following an Islam which has nothing to do with how many people are killed and slaughtered and tortured and injured and maimed and killed, is it right? You don't care about that. You're just sitting in a corner, busy in your own life, praying and fasting. Then that kind of Islam is all available inside the state of Israel as well. Even Israel did not stop the practice of Islam minus Walayat. There is Salatul Jumu'ah taking place, there is Salatul uh, Jumu'ah taking place, there is Zakat, there is, you know, all those worships of Islam are there. Islam by the Salat will never, ever, ever, ever be opposed by the Taghuts. Why would they oppose? This is insane with their policy as long as you are opposing their Salat. So what they are opposing is not Islam you know, minus Malayat. They are opposing the Islam with the Malayat of Ahlul Bayt and Islam. Now let's go to the Hadith of uh, uh, you know, the Holy Prophet when he says that Nahnu uh, Banu Abdul Muttalib, isn't it right? Ma Adana Baytun illa waqad kharibah wala awana kalbun illa waqad jariba وَمَنْ لَمْ يُصَدِّقْ فَالْجَرِّبْ We, the children of Abdul Muttalib, look at the tone of Rasulullah. Look at the, the tense that he's using. Prophet has keeping, is keeping tabs on every information to the Day of Judgment, even beyond that. Isn't it right? He knows everything before anything was created. He has the right to say that kind of statement. So Rasulullah says, نَحْنُ Banu Abdul Muttalib, we, the children of Abdul Muttalib, ma adana baytun illa waqad kharib. There is no house, there is no household which did enmity towards us except the house was devastated, destroyed. Wala awana kalbun, and there is no dog which barked upon us except that it ended up in the illness. Whoever doesn't certify that means whoever doesn't accept what I'm saying, fine, you try, you do it. Try doing it and you would see what happens to you. You do it. So this, uh, uh, he can do it. So basically, uh, the walayat, uh, the prerequisite, what I was discussing, brothers and sisters, the prerequisite of the acceptance and claim of the Iman over the Walayat of Ahlul Bayt is the Tabarri towards the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Abu Hamza as Somali, one of the greatest companions of Imam al Sajjad salam, and Imam al Bakr salam, is a very, a very great person. Imam al Sajjad salam, had said to Abu Hamza as Somali, he is the one who narrated the famous dua of Abu Hamza. Uh, Imam Sajjad had said to him, Inni la astariho idha ra'aytuka. I feel comfort when I see you. Imam Sajjad as well used to feel happy and com comfortable when he had a look over at Abu Hamza. So people like him are so high in knowledge and taqwa and the taharat of qalb that Imam Sajjad, uh, Sajjad used to feel comfort by looking at Abu Hamza. So Abu Hamza al-Samari has narrated from Imam al-Baqir al-Islam that uh, I said to the Imam Ayyu shay'in iza amiltuhu ana istakmaltu haqiqat al-Iman bihi haqiqat al-Iman What is the thing that I, if I do it, I have completed the reality of Iman and Imam al-Baqir al-Salam replied to me that Tuwari awliya Allah 
Prabhu Sahib Bhattu did not say, you know, you pray hundred hundreds of prayers every day. This is kind of it's insulting of some people out there, isn't it right? Who think that this is the criteria for judging the people to be muttaki. And this is actually condemned. If you look at that, the Prophet has stopped us from looking towards the prayers of the people. La tanzuru, the hadith of Rasulullah says, La tanzuru ila tuli ruku al rajul wa sujudihi. Don't look towards the length of the ruku of a person wa sujudihi and his sajda wa kasrat salatihi wa siyamihi wa tilawatihi. Some of the narrations say, Don't look towards the abundance of his prayers and fasting and the tilawat. Because that's the thing a person may be habituated of doing that. He's doing out of adat and habit. Lots of people are doing the salat out of habit, isn't it right? If I'm doing now 14 harams in my life, I keep on praying every day and those 14 harams continue to be done every single day. I don't even bother to stop doing the harams. I'm doing the business as usual. Quran has already said in the Salat al-Tanha, an al-Fahshai wal-Munkar. Certainly the prayers stop from indecent and the haram, the munkar. The person doesn't realize he keeps on doing the haram in his life. Is that right? May Allah give us the tawfiq to abstain from the fahsha and munkar in our life. So what I'm saying is that um, prayers are not considered to be the criteria in the hadith of Rasulullah. Actually, we have been stopped bluntly by the Prophet to look towards the lengthy ruku or sisters of a person or abundance of his prayers. Look at these Taliban, stupid Taliban people, and just like Khawarij, isn't it right? Khawarij used to pray Salat al but came to fight against Imam Ali in Islam and considered Imam Ali to be a kafir, na'udhu billah. They were praying Salat al Namaz al -Shah. So who considers Namaz al to be a criteria to begin with? Not the Prophet. So here Imam al Baqir al Islam did not say to Hamza Somali that basically uh, when he's asking what, what should I do to make that my Iman, Hakikat al Iman, the reality of my faith becomes complete and perfect. Imam Baqir did not say pray 100 records of prayers or pray five months of fasting. It's very good to pray in Islam. It's very good to fast. But that's not the criteria of judging the people and that's not how you make your Iman complete and perfect. The way how we make our Iman complete and perfect is this. Tuwali awliya Allah. These are the lessons that we learn as we are celebrating the Walayat of Muhammad Islam today. Tuwali awliya Allah. That means you love the beloved servants of Allah. All those people who are serving the Walayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do we love them? There are so many people in the Islamic Ummah who are cowards. They are themselves not ready to perform their farida and duty towards Allah. They are right. They are cowards. But if you are a coward, at least at least praise those people who are not cowards and they are performing their duty. You cannot do your farida, and they are doing their farida. At least don't pull their legs. At least support them. Instead of putting roadblocks in, 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 the, in the way of the awliyaullah and putting their legs and objecting on them and their policies, right? at least have appreciation towards what they are doing when you are not able to do what they are doing. You are also supposed to do the same. That's the way how we perfect our iman to wali awliyaullah. That means we love the awliyaullah, the beloved servants of Allah. Wa tu'adi a'da Allah. And you consider the enemies of Allah to be the enemy. Wa takunu ma'as sadiqeen kama amarak Allah. And then you be with the sadiqeen. How Allah has commanded sadiqeen stand for the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. On the day of Qadir, the people of Kurf and Shirk and Nifaq got disappointed because Allah's Khalifa came into power officially. So the Kufr is supposed to be disappointed and Nifaq and hypocrisy 
is supposed to be disappointed, isn't it right? So, uh, the, the, this is the essence of Malayat, when Malayat comes, I remember Imam Khomeini with one of the he said that, uh, you know, that Pushtibana Malayat is Faqeet, Rashi, Ta'asibi, Bebi, Mamlika, Narasat. So, uh, uh, now it is uh, our responsibility uh, that uh, we do not separate the wadayat from Islam. That means the political duties towards the wadayat and governance concept of Ahlul Bayt from Islam. We, that means we follow the political Islam. Siyasat of Amir al-Mumiyah is Islam. Siyasat al-Alawiyya is what we are talking about. Which is the siyasat of Adl of Imam Ali Islam. Which is the same siyasat that Imam Sahib Zaman is going to enforce as the government of justice of the whole world tomorrow. Is that right? This is what we talk about. The Walayat. Islam of Walayat. So now then the verse, I'm coming to the end of my speech. Now the verse was revealed to the Holy Prophet. Today I completed for you your religion and, and perfected and completed for you my ni'mat and I agreed, I am pleased for you about Islam to be a religion. So my teacher again, Ayatullah Jawadi Allah was saying in his tafsir that Al-Islam al-Wala'i huwa al-Wardi in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the meaning, uh, this is a mustafad, this is the benefit that we understand in the light of this ayat of Quran that the uh, Islam al-Wala'i, the political Islam which serves the Wala'at of Ahlul Bayt is the Islam which is which Allah is pleased with. The ayat of Quran is saying, after the malayat announcement is done, then Allah says, Today I completed your religion and I am pleased with Islam as a religion for you. So the Islam after the announcement of the malayat is the Islam with which Allah is pleased. So Islam plus malayat. Is it right? So Islam plus Walayat is what Allah is pleased with. That's the kind of Islam which is considered by Allah to be perfect and complete. So anybody who is following the Islam minus Walayat must understand what the ayat of Quran has already said. وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ To the Prophet Allah said, and if you don't do then you have not performed, you did not convey the, his message. That means that the Prophet did not stand, did not support, did not announce the walayat of Imam Ali salam. He did not fulfill the obligation towards the walayat of Imam Ali salam. that even his risala and message goes down the drain. You have not performed the risala. Who are we? And what's the status of my prayers and fasting when the whole risala of Rasulullah is in danger if the malayat of Imam Ali is not announced. Isn't that right? So we already learn what is the status of those who are following Islam minus malayat and we already understand in the light of the verse Al-Yawma Akmaltu Today I completed the religion. So we understand that Islam plus malayat of Imam Ali is the Islam with which Allah is pleased. So there is no room for the community to follow Islam minus malayat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq to understand and follow the ma'arif of Qur'an and Ahlul Bayt. I would like to request all of you to please read these three du'as with me. Alhamdulillah, al-ladhi ja'alana min al-mutamassikeen bi-wilayati amir al-mu'mineen وَالْأَئِمَّةِ عَلَيْهُ السَّلَامَ الحمد لله الذي جعل كمال دينه وتمام نعمته 
بالولايه امير المؤمنين علي بن ابي طالب عليه السلام الحمد لله الذي اكرمنا بهذا اليوم وجعلنا من الموفين برحبه الينا وميثاقه الذي واثقنا به من ولايته ولاته امره والقوامه بقسطه ولم يجعلنا من الجاحدين والمكذبين بيوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفار والمنافقين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من قتل المسلمين اللهم انصر واحفظ وايد علماء الربانيين ومراجعنا الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقيه قائد المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن البصراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من انصاره واشياعه واتباعه واعوانه بجاه محمد واله الطاهرين Fatiha for the Marbuin of the sponsors and uh, of today's conference and also the Marbuin of the organizers of today's conference.